Hi, this is Professor Ellis, and we are now in week 14, the penultimate week, meaning the uh, one, uh, the next to last uh, lecture for technical writing, English 2575, fall 2021. This is for sections OL68 and OL70. Hope everybody's doing well, that you're staying healthy, that you're doing everything you can to like keep up with your work, that you're sleeping well, you're getting plenty of rest, uh, eating well, taking care of your bodies, taking care of those around you. Because uh, right now we are in the final push to finish the semester on a high note. Uh, and we can do that, uh, but it's something that we have to um, take care of ourselves and those around us to see this thing through. So I do wish you the very best of luck with that. Now, before we get into today's uh, lecture, I do want to remind you not to suffer in silence. You can contact me. My email address is jellis at citytech.cuny.edu. And I have my office hours on Wednesdays from 3 to 5 p.m. on Google Hangouts. The link is on the left-hand side of our Open Lab site or at the top of our syllabus. And I can also see folks by appointment. Uh, just send me an email and let me know what your availability is for like the next week. And I'll try to find a time in my schedule when we can both meet up. Uh, it's absolutely important to do that. Because um, one thing I should mention, um, I you know, those folks that are actually watching the lecture and participating in the classes probably doesn't apply to you whatsoever. Uh, but in the off chance that some folks that haven't been participating do happen to see the lecture, um, I do want to highly recommend you be very honest with yourself about what you can accomplish before the last day that I can uh, collect work in the class, which is going to be that Tuesday, December 21st, to the very bottom of the syllabus. I mean, this is like, shouldn't be uh, uh, new news to anyone. It's uh, been there throughout the semester. Um, but I say this because it's absolutely important to be honest with yourself about what you can accomplish with the very limited time that we have available to us. Like right now it's December 6th. You're not going to be watching this lecture until it's posted on Wednesday. Uh, so not a lot of time left. Uh, so you want to prioritize what needs to get done. Uh, and if you're not able to accomplish like the major individual projects in the class or do those weekly writing assignments and you're likely to fail the class, you might want to consider withdrawing from the class in order to protect your GPA as much as possible. Of course, you need to talk to financial aid, and your advisor to make sure that this wouldn't be um, a bad option for you, but uh, I do want to put that out there uh, on everyone's radar. Uh, that that is an option if you haven't been doing the work. Now, if you've been doing the work, obviously I've been grading it and I've given you comments on it. Uh, you can check your grade over on the left-hand side of our Open Lab course site. Uh, remember, I give you grades on the major projects. So if something's missing, reach out to me. Let me know uh, that you didn't receive a grade on something. Uh, I might have missed it, or it might not have been published correctly on our Open Lab site, in which case I won't see it. Uh, so you want to double check that, that you got grades on the major projects. And then for the weekly writing assignments, I've gone over before how to go into the dashboard, go to comments, search for your name, and you can see all the comments and which posts you've, you've um, made those to. If something's not there, go back and turn it in and you'll be able to get credit on it. All you got to do is after you've done that, email me, let me know that you turned that in. Um, you can let me know that you thought it was turned in, but it wasn't there. Whatever the case may be, it lets me know to go back and check it off for you. Because as I've said before, not only for the weekly writing assignments, but all the major assignments in the class, because we are in unusual circumstances due to the pandemic, uh, I'm not. there's no penalty added for work being turned in late. I want to see your best work, and I will grade it as uh, representative of your best. So turn things in late. It's better to turn in something uh, than nothing. Uh, so that you at least get some grade, because some grade is better than zero whenever we're averaging your final grade. So just keep, I mean, it's a lot of stuff. I know it's a lot of stuff for us all to, to take in and manage, uh, particularly you know, as we get close to the end of the semester. But uh, if anybody has questions about any of that, that's what my email address is for, that's what my office hours are for, and I'll be glad to help you, because I do want to see everyone finish the semester um, and, and be successful in the class. Um, so let's get into what we need to talk about for week 14. We've got a lot of stuff to go over today. So just a quick review. Last week I reminded you about the student evaluation of teaching 
surveys, the set surveys, those are due uh, December 10th. So make sure, please, please get those things done, not just for my class, but for all your classes. It's absolutely important that uh, I and your other professors get as much feedback from our students as possible through those set uh, surveys. Again, it's anonymous. I won't see the results until after the semester is over, and of course your name won't be attached to anything. So please fill out the, the bubble part and give me some written comments. If like you like the class, let me know that you liked it and what you liked about it. If you dislike the class or you disliked an assignment, let me know. Uh, all of that information is useful to me. Uh, but I can't, they're, the cutoff is December 10th, so make sure you get it in before then. Uh, last week we went over the technical report overall layout for your team-based uh, uh, analytical technical report. Um, we're going to be returning to that today to show how you will be turning that in. Uh, then the weekly writing assignment was to write an indi your individual memo. Each member of the team would write this memo on their own talking about your contributions to the project just for uh, week 13. Um, and you'll be doing something similar to that for uh, this week. And then the homework was to continue your research, continue working on the analytical research report uh, so that um, you can get this project in the can, get it turned in uh, after you complete the next components of the assignment, which we're going to go over today, which will be the uh, technical report presentation and website components. So we're going to talk about how to do those things. We're going to talk about how to submit your team project uh, using uh, by one person in your team creating an open lab post that links to your team's project website. And your project website is what's going to collect together all the parts of your project, the report, the website, and your presentation. Uh, da, 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 da. We'll talk about um, submitting your individual memo on teamwork. That's uh, what each individual person in the team uh, will write to report what not only what you contributed to the team project, but also your own observations about what your teammates contributed. Um, if you, you have one team member that really um, went out of the way to make the project happen, give them some kudos in that. And so we'll talk about uh, that as well as reporting on folks that may not have contributed anything. Um, at the, toward the end of the class. Uh, then again, the weekly writing assignment is going to do another individual memo about what you contributed this week, and it should be obviously different than what you did last week. And you can include any drafting, any writing, any citations uh, that you've done. Just copy and paste that into your memo. And again, that's a way of keeping me um, aware of like what the team is doing as well as what you're doing on the project. And as I'll talk about later, you can incorporate some of these weekly writing assignment um, um, reports on your contributions in your individual memo on teamwork. So we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. Uh, so let's get into the presentation and website components of your team-based uh, research report. So. I went over this a little bit last week, but we're going to go into it more depth this week and about how to put these things together. So again, the presentation is meant to summarize the main points of your research report. That means that it should cover the problem that you identified, the solutions you investigated, and then your analysis. What are the recommendations that you would make? Excuse me. The website is what brings everything together for the whole project. It's going to, it's going to be a website that you create on OpenLab. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, but it's going to have pages that summarize your report. So material that you might include in your presentation, you're going to ha be able to have serve double duty and include on your website. Also on the website, you're going to embed your presentation video and you'll link to your research report on Google Docs. So we'll talk about how to do that uh, during today's class. Now, a lot of this I'm going to kind of talk through to give you an overview of 
what uh, each incorporates and then we'll go through all the um, individual parts of the presentation and website. So don't, don't think I'm only going, giving you an overview and not going into detail. We're going to go into detail. Uh, I just want to give the overview first. So your presentation, what I would recommend you do is use Google Slides like I use for each of our lectures. You know, I have Google Slides in the background right now. Um, you should record your presentation as a Zoom meeting uh, with screen sharing of your Google Slides. And I'll talk about that in a moment. That will allow you to record your meeting, meaning your presentation, uh, as an MP4 video, which you can then upload to YouTube, or if you prefer, Vimeo would also be fine, but I'm only going to show you uh, how to do things with YouTube. Now, the website is you know, not only an important component of the project, but I want you to be using OpenLab to create it because it will allow you to create a WordPress-based website um, as what we call an OpenLab project. Now, why this is useful to you is, as I've said at the beginning of the semester, I've designed all the assignments to use real-world technologies that you can make claims to on your resume, on your LinkedIn.com um, profile, uh, on job application letters, so that you can say you know how to use some of these tools. Because, like, if we were doing all this on Blackboard, you, I mean, if you were to put some of that on, like, your resume, like, oh, I turned in assignments on Blackboard, people would think you're just absolutely crazy. It doesn't mean anything. But if you can say that you know how to create a basic website with WordPress, how to publish content on WordPress, how to um, upload a video to YouTube, these are practical skills that mean something. Um, so by doing this project with your team, you're gaining that experience that you can then mention on your resume and other professional materials. And of course, that'll be something that might help you uh, get the jobs that you want later on, be able to show you have real communication skills. Uh, now, the website uh, you're going to uh, use to embed your video content of your presentation. Uh, you're also going to link to your uh, Google Doc of your research report that we went over last week, and I'll show you how to do that. Now, before I go into some of these details, let's take a look real quickly at the syllabus. So here I am on uh, the OL68 uh, syllabus, same for OL70. And let's just take a look at the grade distribution again. So keep in mind your collaborative research report, your analytical research report, that's 20% of your grade, okay? So remember that. Now, and again, that's the heavy lifting on this project. Get that done, everything else is based on it for your collaborative project. Now for the, the smaller parts of the collaborative project, you have your oral presentation, that's 10%. And basically this presentation is a summary of your much larger research report, okay? So that's gonna be a oral presentation, meaning it's a spoken presentation that's anchored by Google Slides. Now, you can also, if you prefer, you can use Microsoft PowerPoint, you can use uh, Apple Keynote, uh, you can even use the um, presentation software built into LibreOffice, I don't care. Um, I recommend using Google Slides because it's something you can collaboratively write with, just the same way you can collaborati collaboratively write with Google Docs. It works on you know, the same underlying technology. Uh, so it can be beneficial whenever your team can't meet together uh, to work on the slides. Like you can divvy things up and say one person do, does this slide, one person does this slide, etc. cetera. Uh, whereas if you're using PowerPoint, uh, Apple Keynote, et cetera, um, it'll, one person's gonna have to take point on, on putting everything together. So it just adds some more um, weight to one individual rather than splitting it up um, separately. So that's the presentation, 10%. And then the website, which is what kind of pulls everything together, because the website is where you're going to collect together um, 
your oral presentation, the link to your Google Doc for your analytical research report, and then summarize all of your work is going to be in that website. And that's what I'm going to be looking at to grade everything. And so when you turn in your project, basically the way you turn it in is you're going to have one team member create an open lab post on our open lab course site for the whole team. And in that post, you're going to say that um, this is the project titled X, created by, you're going to list everybody's names and your team, and then you're going to provide a link to your website. And that website link, I just click it, and that's going to take me to your website. I'll be able to grade the website. I'll be able to grade your embedded presentation, and I'll be able to click the link that takes me to your analytical research report and grade that. So you can see how everything is linked together and everything is collected together with your website. But the way that I get to it is going to be that post that you make on our Open Lab site linking to your team's um, website. Now, the last thing for your work in the class that goes into your 10% teamwork, collaboration, and communication grade includes a 500-word memo describing your contributions and the contributions of your teammates to your project. Now this is something that's completely private. Okay, You won't be posting this on our Open Lab site. It won't be a part of your collaborative website. Okay, This is an individual private assignment. And what I want you to do with this is you on your in your own word processor on Google Docs doesn't matter where you write a 500 word memo addressed to Professor Ellis to me and in that memo you will want to break down all the things that you did on your team project and also break down based on your observations what your teammates contributed uh, if certain teammates you went out of their way to do a lot of work tell me that. Uh, if other teammates didn't do anything, also let me know that as well. And you'll basically just email that memo to me. And I would recommend just copy and paste that email, that memo into an email to me. Don't attach it as a Word doc. Don't attach it as like, you know, a SharePoint on Office 365. Don't you know, include a link to a Google doc. I want you to just copy and paste the content of your memo into an email addressed to me, jellis at citytech.cuny.edu, uh, with that information. That'll satisfy uh, that assignment for this part of your grade, and it'll allow me to have that inside view into what everyone was doing in your project. And I'll be able to see, you know, based on what everybody's saying, so I don't want I don't think there should be any concern about things being misrepresented because I'll get each person's perspective on things in the team. Uh, and it's private, so it's only between me and the individual. This won't be anything I ever share um, with other members of your team uh, or the class as a whole. So make sure you remember that it's private. It's going to be just between you and me. So I, I need you to be as open and honest, not just about what you contribute, but what your other teammates contribute as well. All right, so let's see, what do we got to do next? We're gonna talk about your collaborative presentation in more detail. Now your collaborative presentation is gonna be a video presentation of five to 10 minutes in length. Uh, meaning it can be no less than five minutes, but no more than 10 minutes. I really want to stress this window uh, requirement for how long your presentation is. Um, I've had in the past students try to do a 20 minute presentation. Do not do that. That will count against you. Because it's absolutely important, as I've talked about in these lectures before, that you get prepared when you're in the workplace, when you're a professional, of being able to meet the requirements of the deliverables you're asked to produce. 
So far in the class, we've focused mostly on word count. And that's obviously a big part of the types of requirements you're going to have on different uh, projects that you contribute to. But when we're talking about presentations, time limits are what are important. Because if you're giving a presentation uh, internally to like your team or to your company, uh, you're probably going to be giving presentation presentations along with other people. And your manager may say you only have five minutes to talk. Well, it's absolutely important you stick to that five minutes because several things might happen. One is if you start to go over five minutes, they may cut you off and then you don't get to say everything you intended to say. Or you may take time away from your coworkers who also have to present and suddenly you have people that are really pissed off at you because then you took time away from their presentations. You don't want to do that. You want to try, obviously you be a good colleague and stick to the requirements that you've been given. Also consider when you're a professional and you might be giving a talk at a trade show or a conference, time limits are very strictly uh, adhered to. You can be cut off, uh, you may take away time from your Q&A period. Um, all these things can be very bad. So you have to stick to these time limits when you give presentations. And this is a way for you to practice that. Now, your oral presentation is something that needs to involve all team members. Okay, Everybody has to speak. Now, it doesn't mean everybody has to speak equally, but everybody has to speak some part of your team's oral presentation. There's only one presentation for your whole team. It needs to have a visual component that uses Google Slides or other presentation software um, that is shared and controlled by one team member during the presentation. So one team member is like in charge of moving the slides back and forth just like I'm moving the slides back and forth right now as I'm talking. You also need to have a script and you need to assign roles in that script for who speaks at a certain point in your presentation. Now, the script is going to be the summary of your analytical research report. Okay, so your research report is going to is huge. There's no way that you could have everybody in your team speak parts of your presentation and have it fit just five to ten minutes. You're going to have to summarize, thinking back to our very first assignment in the class where you su summarize a technical or scientific article, you got to summarize your analytical research report into a much smaller document, meaning your script, what you speak, that's only about two to four pages long. Why do I say two to four pages? Well, typically, you can speak one page, double spaced, in about two and a half minutes. So two pages of a script equals about five minutes of speaking time. Four pages is about 10 minutes. Now, obviously, if you speak faster or slower, you have to modify how many pages you're working with. I'm just giving the two to four pages as a rule of thumb, okay, as, as a, um, a guideline but it may not be exactly that. You still need to read your script aloud and time yourself. Just use your phone uh, or stopwatch to, to time yourself speaking to see if you can hit that five to 10 minute mark with about two to four pages summary of your analytical research report. Now, as a part of your script, you need to include things that you otherwise might take for granted. Like you need to introduce yourself whenever you're speaking on the presentation because someone just hearing you speak may not know who you are. Um, whoever you know, begins talking on your presentation needs to introduce the topic that your presentation is about. Um, you don't have to include things in your presentation to say that this was for a class uh, or this was something Professor Ellis assigned to you. Think of this presentation as a professional presentation about the research project that you and your teammates have undertaken on your own, okay? I want you to completely own 
your presentation. And, and think of it in those professional terms, not simply as an assignment in our class. Now, the way I recommend you create your presentation is very simple. I would recommend you use Zoom, and you can, you, everybody in your team can sign up for Zoom for free, and you can use a free account for this. You don't have to use the paid account to create a um, presentation using Zoom. Whoever starts your team meeting, and so like if I bring over my Zoom window here, whoever you have one person on your team should start a new meeting. Just click that button and then share the link uh, with all your teammates. That person will have an option at the bottom of their screen. So like here, you got your Zoom controls you're going to have like you know, a starry-eyed, crazy-eyed expression just like mine because you're so excited to be recording your presentation, right? Whoever starts the meeting is going to have this button down here for record. And they're also going to have a button down here for share screen. Well, they need to share their screen and not share the whole screen, but choose an application. Choose whichever application you're using for your presentation. So like if you're in like me, and wanting to record just part of your screen, I would choose Firefox because I have Firefox uh, with my uh, Google Slides open here. Uh, you might be using Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, whatever it is, uh, or even Microsoft uh, PowerPoint if you're using that for your presentation. Choose that application so it'll fill the screen and not you won't see anything else on, on, um, in the background. Uh, before you begin speaking, your host needs to click record. That'll record uh, the whole meeting as an MP4 video that includes both the video and audio uh, so that you'll have everything uh, from the meeting essentially saved as your presentation. And then this is true for uh, PC, uh, Mac, and Linux. Uh, whoever's the host needs to go into their user folder go into Documents, and then inside Documents will be a subfolder called Zoom. And inside that Zoom folder, you'll find an MP4 file of your meeting's recording after you've uh, clicked Stop Record and End the Meeting. It'll be saved there, okay? So make sure you do set and you close the meeting before going to look for that video file because it needs to save it uh, before you can actually do anything with it. Now, the way this is going to look is essentially uh, like this. You're going to have your teammates video uh, little talking heads all at the top. You, need, you do need to turn on your video, your video uh, for the meeting so that we can see you. We need to be able to see you speaking whenever you give your, uh, when you record your presentation. You can do like I do if you want to like cut out distractions. You notice that I have my, my uh, video facing me facing a wall. So I, ha I backed myself up against a wall, so there's nothing going on behind me. Nobody walking around. Uh, my cat doesn't come into view. Uh, that way there's no distraction whenever I'm recording these videos for you. And you should do something similar uh, to cut down on distractions uh, or anything you don't want people to see whenever you're on video. And then below your faces, you will see down here the Google Slides shared screen or the Microsoft PowerPoint shared screen with all your slides. Okay. Now, your very first uh, slide in your presentation uh, ought to include uh, the title of your um, research report and it should include all your names. Make sure all the names of the people that have participated in the project are listed there. Now, as I've said before, you may have some team members that never show up for whatever reason. If someone does not contribute at all, their name should not be on there. If someone contributes a little, maybe not as much as the others, their name still needs to be there because they contributed something. We'll account for that whenever you send me your individual memos on collaboration. Uh, but for now, everybody that's participating in the project uh, needs to have their name on that title screen. Oh, one other thing about uh, whenever you uh, share your screen. Uh, whoever uh, 
selects to have um, who or whoever starts the meeting and shares their screen for Google Slides or Microsoft PowerPoint, uh, make sure that when you start your presentation and it goes full screen, uh, if you're using Google Slides, you'll see you'll need to mouse over the screen and you'll see this little guy down here pop up. You see it's, it's actually popping up twice because I have a screenshot and I have it here again. But dub, I mean, uh, click one time on these three dots and then choose exit full screen. And what that'll do is shrink your presentation to fit inside your browser window. That's really important so you can still see everything else going on like your controls for Zoom. So I can like have my Zoom controls, I can bring them over. Um, if you don't, then basically the presentation will fill everything and you won't be able to see anything going on with your Zoom meeting. Uh, so make sure you remember to do that. There's similar controls in um, uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, uh, but it, there's a different option you have to choose when you start the presentation to make it fill the screen. And so you can look in the help documents or do a Google search to figure out what that is. Um, but for Google Slides, it's very easy. Just mouse over and then click these three dots and then choose exit full screen or you can press control shift F. It does the same thing. All right. So that's the collaborative presentation. All right, so now let's talk about uh, the collaborative website. Again, this is all overview. We're gonna go in and do the, the actual steps of all this in just a minute. Actually, since we just talked about how to create your presentation, uh, let's take uh, a quick uh, segue here to show how you will um, upload it and also some assigned reading I have for you, I, I just remembered. So for this week, with the collaborative presentation, I'm assigning you two readings or a reading and a viewing, okay, that's going to help you with your presentation. The reading is going to be the oral presentations chapter in David McMurray's online technical writing textbook, which you've already seen the textbook, but this is the section on oral presentations. Read over this to think about what should go into your presentation and what you can leave out. Again, the presentation should summarize the major parts of your, um, pre your research report. You, know, your, you identify a problem, you research solutions, you make recommendations. Those are the three main parts that need to go into your research report. Um, I mean, your research presentation. Now, remember also, just as I've mentioned before, any images that you use in your presentation or any of your uh, website, project, anything, they have to be made by you, meaning you take the photographs, you do the screenshots, uh, you do the drawings and illustrations. I'm not grading any of this on artistic ability. I'm grading it on intentionality, just like with your instruction manual. Uh, I want to see you thinking about how you compose visual images that support what you're writing and what you're talking about um, as much as I'm thinking about the, your intentionality with the way you string words together into sentences, sentences into paragraphs, paragraphs into uh, sections and then into an entire document. All of these things involve choices, rhetorical choices that you make. I'm mean, going back to the very first lecture in our class. So again, all the images that you use have to be made by you. But thinking about like writing your script, what you should put onto your slides for your presentation, refer to this document for ideas. Now the other assigned viewing is this comedy routine by the comedian Don McMillan. And the reason why I assign this, I always show this to my students whenever I teach in person, uh, but I think it's important to know what you should not do in a presentation to help you do the right things in a presentation. And what Don McMillan does in a comedic, humorous way is show you all the bad things that you can do in a presentation. So watch this, it's less than 10 minutes long, but you'll learn a boatload of stuff about how to put together a good presentation uh, by identifying the things you should not do, okay? So the David McMurray reading and then the Don McMillan video 
our assigned readings for everybody in your team to know uh, better about how to put together your presentation uh, component of the team research project. Uh, then, also I'll mention now about uploading your file to YouTube. Um, so let's see, I'll include some links under the lecture this week uh, that gives you information about uh, recording a presentation using Zoom. I'll include a link that shows you the Zoom help file about where to find your recordings so you'll be able to find your presentation recording there. And then I'll also include a link to how to upload videos to YouTube. Uh, this is from the YouTube help section. But just very briefly to show you. Um, so the, the, the simplest way to upload your video to YouTube is you know, one person in your team, preferably whoever uh, recorded your uh, team presentation on Zoom, uh, should log into their Google account and just go to youtube.com and once they're on YouTube uh, you will see this icon in the upper right hand corner it looks like a little camera and when you mouse over it says create you click on that and then click on upload video and it brings up this window here and on this window you can either drag that mp4 file and drop it right here or you can click select files and then find the file on your hard drive select it and then it'll begin uploading now after you've began uh, the upload it's going to ask you questions like what to title it uh, what is the description excuse me um, and the title it should be the title of the presentation in the description you should include excuse me, your abstract of your uh, research report and all your team members' names that contributed to it. Um, most of the, everything else underneath that you should just leave as default and click next. Uh, the next page that comes up, just click next, leave everything like it is. Um, the third page, leave everything default, next. And then the final page will be where it asks you uh, what kind of permissions you should give the video. Choose public, uh, then, uh, then click uh, and maybe submit or complete at the bottom. It'll finish uploading. And once it's finished uploading, you will have a list of your videos under channel content where you'll see like a little um, thumbnail of the video you just uploaded here. And then just click these three little dots on the right and then click get shareable link and you'll see link copy to clipboard and we're going to need that link when we begin creating your website um, and submitting your work so we'll just hold on to that link uh, until after we talk about creating your team's website all right so that's the presentation stuff all right so collaborative website So what we're going to do for the collaborative website component of your project is you'll create what's called an open lab project site. Uh, well, it's going to include a project profile and site, but the site is where we're going to do all the work. You use the website to present a summary of your report's findings. So basically you'll have sections on the website for your problem in which you have a small written summary of that. You're going to have a page for uh, solutions and you'll have a short written summary of the solutions you found. And then you'll want to have a page for recommendations in which you'll summarize your recommendations findings. Now these three sections, you can use the writing that you uh, put into your abstract. Uh, there, you may find you need to add a little bit more or you, you may want to edit it some, which is totally fine. For this project, it's okay for you to do what's called single sourcing. And you can think of the work that you've put into your research report as being the single sourced um, document that you're going to be reusing some of that content uh, for writing your presentation script, uh, for um, 
writing your presentation script, for the slides that you create for your presentation, and for the different content that you're going to be putting into the website. Um, that you can repurpose those things in these different places. Uh, as I said before, the heavy lifting you've already done uh, by writing the research report. You can use some of that content in these other uh, deliverables that you're creating uh, for, the, uh, re for your collaborative project. Now, on the website you get to choose a theme you can add images, again, images that you've made yourself. It can be photographs, drawings, illustrations, whatever is representative or useful to conveying the ideas and the topic of your research report. Uh, the website should have a landing page. I mean, it's like the first thing that you see whenever you uh, go to the website. And on that page, you want to embed your presentation video and a link to your shared report uh, on Google Docs. And I'll show you how to do that in a second whenever we walk through this. Um, and then we'll have you create pages that include a page for your problem, a page for solutions, and a page for res recommendations. And finally, a page about your team where you each team member can write a small bio and, and include a, a headshot or a picture of yourself um, so that you're all represented on the website as being the authors of this project. And I'm gonna guide you through creating this website in just a moment, but I want you to look at this as like a, this page here as a final project checklist for su before submitting your work on our Open Lab course site. Um, so you're going to create a single post on our Open Lab course site to turn in your project. So only one team member has to do this. Not everybody, just one team member. And in that post, they're going to have a link that goes to your project website. Okay. And in the project website, you need to have a link to your shared viewable version of your research report on Google Docs. You need to embed your presentation video on YouTube. And then you need to summarize your research report in different pages, including problems, solutions, and recommendations. And then there should also be an About Us page that includes bios for all your teammates. So each person needs to write a little bio about themselves That'll, that goes on there. Um, and then the final thing of the checklist is that each team member is going to email me their own private individual report on collaboration. That's just, you write a memo, 500 words, summarizing what you did on the project and what you observed others and your team do on the project. And you email that to me directly, and I will reply to that email to let you know that I received it. So you know that it got turned in and everything is good to go. So let's take a look now about how to do all this, how to create your website and how to turn in your project on Open Lab. So let's see, find Open Lab. So go to openlab.citytech.cuny.edu and only one team member needs to do this, but you should all work on this together, okay? Don't just dump this on one person to do unless one person in your team wants to, to take this on as their re delegated responsibility. So after you go to Open Lab, make sure you're logged in. See your name there. And then what you want to do is mouse over My Open Lab and go to My Projects. Oh, I see, it's logged me out. Uh, log in again, keep me logged in. There we go. When you're actually logged in, you can, you'll see your name whenever you go to my, op my Open Lab and go down to My Projects, very important. On this page, you see this link here for Create, Clone, a Project. So we're going to click Create, Clone, a Project. We're gonna create a new project so leave a dot next to create a new project. 
and then project name. For project name, let's call this report, or how about um, technical report on X. You give the title of your research report and the project name. In the project description, you should copy and paste that abstract of your research report into this box. Okay? You see both of these are required, so you have to fill these out before you can proceed with creating the project. Shared settings. Leave that unchecked. Uh, project contact. This is going to default to whoever is setting this up, so just leave that like it is. You don't have to add anyone else. Now under schools, you, uh, it's asking, is your project associated with one or more of the college's schools? Um, and for this, we can actually leave this blank. We don't even have to worry about this. So I'm going to put uh, NA. Uh, category. Please select the following categories, including this information will make it easier for others to find your project. We don't need to worry about that. Site details. Yes, set up a site. So make sure you put a check next to set up a site. Now here, it's asking you to create a new site. And it gives you a blank box after openlab.citytech.cuny.edu. So what you put here uh, will be the URL, the link, for your project site. Uh, I would recommend choosing something that is representative of your project title. Uh, so you could, but think of it, this is a uh, website URL link, so everything has to go together. You can't put any spaces here. Um, so, for example, I could say report on video card shortage. And see how I used underscores to create spaces. Report on underscore video underscore card underscore shortage. I could also use dashes. Doesn't matter. Or I could even leave out any any of the dashes and just put all the words together. See? All of these are perfectly fine. Now if you put in uh, a title for your site that's already taken, whenever you click Create Project and Continue, it'll give you an error message, in which case you need to change the name to something else. But we're just going to leave that as it is uh, and then click Create Project and Continue. So I didn't get an error message, so I know that was a, a valid URL for me to use. Um, we're going to leave a dot next to this as a public project. Uh, project site, we're going to leave it public and allow search engines to index the site. Member role settings, leave all this as default. Author, editor, administrator, leave that just like it is and then click next step. Now upload avatar, this will be the picture you see whenever uh, someone is navigating through Open Lab to find your site. You don't have to upload an avatar here, uh, but if you want to upload an image that represents your project, you may do so here. Just click browse and then upload image. After you've done that, just click next step. And then here you can invite Open Lab members to your project. Um, and since you know the names of your team members, you can search for your team members by beginning to type in their names. And there'll be a drop down list, and you can add them to the site uh, so that they can also edit with you all the content on it. That's very important. Uh, but I'll show you a way that you can they can add themselves uh, as well. So you can search for members, add them this way, and then once you've done that, click Finish. Now, if there are some uh, members that were unable to add themselves or you weren't able to find their names, you can, through your team chat, like however you're communicating with one another, you can copy 
this URL at the top, this is to the project um, profile. Okay, remember like our class has this project profile that you go to before you click visit project site. And on this page, they will see an option to join the project. And they can click that and then join the project and that will allow them to then uh, begin contributing to uh, the project site as well. Okay, so if you can't find them whenever there's that last step to add members, direct them to the project profile page that you see right here and then they'll be able to click that link right here for join project and then they'll be able to join that way as well. All right, so this is the profile, but the profile is not where the magic happens. The magic happens on the project site because this profile, this is not WordPress. WordPress is when we go to the project site. So that's where we're gonna do all the work for your team's website. So let's click on visit project site. Now by default, this is what a project site looks like. Uh, I got a title, this is a City Tech Open Lab project site. It has a link here for project profile. You click that, that takes you back over here to the project profile. Okay, so that's, we're not gonna be changing that. What we're gonna be changing is these page links here, about, sample page, sample subpage, we're gonna be doing away with all that and fixing it up the way we want it uh, for your um, project's website. If you scroll down, you can see that there's this hello world first post. This is your landing page. And this is where we're going to be editing uh, this for your um, link to your research report on Google Docs and your embedded video on YouTube. So let's, let's get into the nitty gritty of working with WordPress. And I'll also give you links uh, to help you uh, with this because there's a lot of help documents on Open Lab for editing project sites. So I'll give you links to that underneath this week's lecture so that you can make use of those uh, as you're doing this as well. So to edit your project site, we need to mouse over where it says the title of your, um, your project on Open Lab, a technical report on whatever. Mouse over that and then go to dashboard. Now, the first thing we want to do is choose a theme that we like to change the look and feel of the project site. The way we do that is you see all we have all these options over here on the left. Let's mouse over appearance and go to themes. And you see that this theme in the upper left hand corner is what's active. See it says active and it's called 2016, that theme. And this is the general layout of that theme. You got a title, you got a menu on the left, and then you have the landing page, like your, your first blog post underneath that. Well, we got these other themes that we can use. Uh, 2015 puts the uh, menu on the left. That's what I use for my class course sites. Uh, there's this 2013 uh, that gives like a, a large image at the top and a menu underneath. Uh, 2012. Uh, gives you a title at the top, you have a menu underneath, and then your landing page underneath that. Education Pro uh, is, some, is a very visually oriented uh, theme. Similarly, Hemingway is useful for a very image oriented theme. Um, so why don't, we, why don't we try that? I'm gonna try Hemingway. And the way you do that is you, uh, you mouse over the theme that you want and then choose Activate. And you can, tr you can cycle through all these themes uh, and try different ones. It won't mess up any of the content that you write on your website. So like you can create all the pages for your website and then choose a theme afterwards. That's fine as well, okay? So after I've done that, the next thing I need to do is change the pages. And the way I do that is I mouse over here in the menu and I'm gonna go to pages, click pages. Now you can see I got these pages here. I don't like any of them. I want to start fresh and new. 
So I want to check this box next to title and that you said automatically checks all of them. Bulk actions, move to trash, apply. So now I have no pages on my site. So I'm going to add the pages that I told you you need to have for your project. So I'm going to click add new next to pages. For my first page, I'm going to title this um, problem. And underneath that, I'm going to click. And you should be familiar with this because this looks just like when you're creating a post. WordPress is very consistent in the way ev everything works for composing content, whether it be a post or a page, um, that it looks very similar. So I give a title to my page, problem. And underneath that, this is where I summarize um, the problem researched in my team's research report. After you've done that, click Publish. And then click Publish again. All right, so that page is added. Uh, I'm going to go back to Pages. And you see Problem is listed there now. And I'm going to click Add New. And we'll call this one Solutions. This page is where I summarize the solutions that my team researched in response to the problem, to the selected problem. Okay, so I've done that. I click publish. I click publish again. So I go back to pages. And now I see two pages. I see problem, solutions. Let's add new again. And this is going to be recommendations. This is where I summarize the recommendations that my team make based on the solutions that we researched in response to the chosen problem, period. Publish, publish. Go back to pages, problem, recommendations, solutions. All right, we've got one last page we need to create. And that's going to be, about, we'll just call it about. Or about the team. How about that? That sounds pretty good. Um, and on this page, maybe the easiest way to do this, um, hmm. okay, there's a couple of different ways. One way is that uh, each person can uh, write a short bio about themselves. So I could say, you know, little my is a, we'll say a computer engineering major at City Tech. She is interested in more efficient computing designs. Mary Selden is a Psycho historian, psycho history major at City Tech. He is interested in um, foretelling. If I spell right, using. Math. All right. We'll say um, Timmy make team face is a professional and technical writing major at City Tech. They are interested in a 
computer communication techniques. So here I just give a list of the team members that are contributing to the project. Um, but what you should do is make sure you alphabetize them by last name. Uh, so little Ma is going to come after Timmy McTeamface. Okay. MC, MY, SC, right? Now, you could also have each person add. So, like you can see, I added a line before Timmy McTeamface and click plus. I can choose, just type in image and then click image. And then I can upload an image of that team member's face or picture that represents them before their bio. So we can put one image there. I can add a line after team, team face before little my. Click plus. Type in image. Click image. And same for Harry Selden here. Plus, image, image. And for each of these, upload an image. Uh, or you can just drag into this, this blue line box and it'll upload an image for each person. Um, it's not a requirement, but that, that would make it look, you know, I think, sharper uh, and snazzier. Uh, another way that you could do this is create a list. Um, you, for a list, just pull down this um, menu here where you see the paragraph symbol and you can see list and it creates a bulleted list. And for that, I would just, you know, copy everybody's bios helps if copy and paste wants to work. Might have to restart the browser. Um, it's a technical problem there, but in any event, you can create a list and in each bullet point, you have one team member's name and bio. Uh, but try to be consistent, like you want to stick to the same kind of pattern. You notice here I give team member's name, I say what their major is, and I say what school they're at. Then I give just one line about what their interests are. Um, you can do something similar, you can come up with something different, but whatever you choose to do, it should be consistent for all team members. So after I've done all that, I'm going to click publish, click publish again. All right, so now i got all my pages there about the team, problem, recommendation, solutions. So if I go back now to uh, our project site and I'm looking around, hey, my pages aren't here, what the hell? Simple enough. What we have to do is add those pages to the menu that we'll see right here at the top of the page. So let's go back into the dashboard and then we want to mouse over here on the left and go to appearance and we need to go to menus. Now you can see here that it gives us a warning. There are some invalid menu items. Please check or delete them. Well, that's because we deleted some of those pages we don't want. So I need to uh, click this little down arrow and then click remove next to these that are red. Remove, remove, remove. All right, so now we need to add in the pages that we've just created. Well, here on the left, it defaults to pages. That's great, but we need to make sure we see them all. We're gonna click View All, and we got Home, About the Team, Problems, sol Recommendations, Solutions. Well, we need to also put these in the order that we want them to appear in. Well, we want Problem first. So I'm gonna add to Menu. And you see problem appears after project profile and home. That's good. We want these to be first, then problem. After that, we want to have uh, solutions. So I check solutions and then click add to menu. There you see solutions. Then I want to click uh, recommendations, add to menu, recommendations. 
and then finally click about the team and add to menu and then we got about the team after we've done that click save menu um, see so save menu there click that sorry it's behind my um, video but click save menu and then it's going to bring you back and show you the menu structure again to check to make sure that it worked we click back on technical report and now we can see our pages linked here I click on problem there's my problem page solutions there's my solutions page recommendations recommendations page about the team about the team page now uh, when you're logged in and you're um, you're one of the members of your team you can click on edit on any of these pages and change them and then and then update them or you can go back into dashboard go to pages and for any of the pages you have these options and you can you want to choose edit block editor and that allows you to edit any of the, the pages and once you've edited it you click update in the upper right hand corner and you'll see it says updated and then you get this message page updated down here in the lower left so you know that everything's been changed the way you want it alright so that's how we get all the pages that you need in your in your project site now the uh, other things that we need to do are add a link to your research report and embed the video from your team's presentation on YouTube. The, where we're going to do that is over on posts. And so now let's mouse over posts over on the left. And then we see this Hello World post um, that is there by default. Let's get rid of that. I don't like that there. Because you see the date on that's like 2011. We don't we, that that isn't representative of when you're actually doing this work. So let's get rid of that guy, and we can just click trash when we mouse over Hello World. It's gone. Now what we want to do is add a new post, and this is just like what you've done before. Um, whenever you've um, you know, created your post for the other assignments in the class, so let's click on Add New and we'll say add title and for the title of this um, we could just simply again use the title of your report um, report on and then give whatever the title of your report is now in the content area there's uh, really um, three things that we need to include here. We need to include your YouTube video. We need to include an abstract of your project. And we need to include a link uh, that says this. You may read our research report here, okay? Just a plain sentence like that. Your abstract, find it in your research report and copy and paste it here, above where you write that sentence by itself. Now that YouTube video, let's take a look at that. So returning to YouTube, I showed you before after you've uploaded the video, you can click the three dots and then click get shareable link and that'll copy the link to the clipboard that same link you can get is if you're looking at your video so if I go to the video link and you see this link at the top you can copy that link that's exactly the same one but once you've copied that go back over to your project site and get rid of that and just simply paste your link into that post that's going to be on the landing page of your project site. When you paste the link, look, it automatically embeds the video. You don't have to do anything else. All you need is that link. Once you've embedded the video, you've got the abstract of your project underneath it, 
And then at the bottom here where you write, you may read our research report here, that's where we need to go get the link to your actual project uh, report on Google Docs. Uh, so let's see, where do I have that? So here's my analytical research report document that we worked on last week. Okay, so you want to look over it, make sure you got everything right with your table of contents, you're happy with it. Then, and this is unlike your instruction manual, okay? We're not doing the same thing that we did with your instruction manual. Remember instruction manual went to file, publish to the web? We're not doing that with your research report. Instead, we're going to use the share option in the upper right hand corner. So click share. Now on this page, what we want to do is get the link. You see this bottom part here? And we want it to be anyone in the internet with this link can view. So we need to click change. That's going to give us this green box here and we need to click copy link. Link copy. After we've done that, we make sure this still says anyone with the link is a viewer. That's right. That's by default. It's what we want. Click done. Then we go back over to our page, the landing page for our uh, project report, and we want to highlight the word here in that sentence I had you write. You may read our research report here. Okay. Highlight here, and then click this chain link icon that's going to create a link. You see it says search or type URL. Well here we just want to paste that link. I'm just going to press control V on the keyboard. See the link went in there and then click this little return or submit icon at the end. You'll see that there's a line underneath my link now and I can even click on it and I see that the link is there. So the link is working. After I've done all that I want to click publish and publish again and then to make sure everything looks right I just click on the title technical report on whatever your title is and then I can scroll down and on the landing page I have my video I got my abstract and then you can see you may read our research report here and if I click that that takes me over to the report so I can read it now you want to make sure that link works for anybody, meaning me. I don't want you to share a link that doesn't give me viewing rights. Because if I click that and I have to go hunt you down, I will be unhappy. Make sure you log out of Google Docs and you click that link and make sure you can read that research report without being logged in to verify that I can read it too. That's very important. You always want to double check and make sure that your deliverables work the way that they're intended for your audience. Who is your audience on this? It's me. So I can read it and give you a grade on it. Especially now that we're running out of time, I don't have time to chase you down uh, to get your work from you. So make sure you double check to make sure those links work. So we've gone over how to create uh, the pages. Uh, one last thing I'll show you is about like customizing like the images. Let's go back to the dashboard. So here on the dashboard, I can mouse over appearance and you can see that it gives me options about changing the theme, which we already looked at. We can customize. There's the option for header and background. Uh, let's see what's under customize. So under customize, I can change my header image, which would be this image here that's under that's underneath the title. I can choose to hide that image. I mean, more than likely, unless you're doing a report on Barnes, you don't need that picture to stay there. I click that and publish. That's a pretty good trick that it actually didn't change the image. Maybe that image is coming from background image? No, it's not. Let's see what happens when I change the background image. Ah, the background image is going to change what's going on 
underneath your text. Well, that's completely unreadable, so I'm going to remove that. Publish. So anytime you make changes, just click this Publish, and you'll be able to see on the right the changes that you've made. Well, since hiding the image didn't do anything, I'm going to add a new image, and I can choose to upload files from my computer. And again, those pictures that you use need to be something made by you. It can be anything, but it should be something relevant to what it is you're writing about. Um, but instead of uploading, saying I'm going to use one of these default images that's included, I'm going to select and crop. Crop image. All right, so now it, it did change the image now. So it seems like you do have to set some image if you are using Hemingway. Because um, once I change it, now you can see the barn is gone, and now we can see the city tech image in the background, uh, which is fine. I click back. Um, don't, don't mess with the menus beyond what I've already shown you how to do. Um, just to, I mean, you can experiment, but make sure that you know how to undo any changes you've done if it doesn't look right. Uh, you can also change colors. There's like you know, colors you can use for the background and accent color. Uh, but I recommend not going hog wild with that because you want to make sure your site is readable. And you can, if you choose the wrong color combination, it can make it very difficult to read uh, the text on the screen. So I would suggest always sticking what, with the default settings on colors. Um, now, one final thing, look at site identity. With site identity, it's already going to populate the site title with what you typed in when you created your project on OpenLab to begin with. But the tagline, that's this line here underneath, that I want you to change. You, should, you can either get rid of it uh, or you can add a subtitle uh, to what your technical report is on. Uh, if you want to, um, you say, the problem, solutions, and recommendations, right? That works. Or you can just leave nothing. You just like delete it. And so that way, the only title we see here is the technical report title that you gave. Either way is fine, doesn't matter uh, to me, as long as you change it from, you know, it's a City Tech uh, Open Lab site. After you've made any, all the changes you want, just click on X in the upper left corner, and that takes you back to the dashboard, and then click on your title to then view the site again the way that you've made it. All right. All right, so now we got to turn this thing in. We got everything done on your project uh, WordPress site. So where is our core site? Ah, here it is. So I'm just going to move this over so I can get to it a little bit easier. All right. So now, once you've completed your project site, complete with your presentation video, the link to your research report, and all those pages on your website complete, have one person in your team, not all the people, just one person in your team needs to do this. You have that one person go to your project site. They can see it just like this. You see the landing page underneath, okay? So you know you're in the right place. Then you want to copy the URL at the top. You'll say openlab.citytech.cuny.edu slash whatever the URL for your, your project is. Copy that to your clipboard. Go back on an, uh, another tab to our course site. So here I am on the OL68 site. The same is true for OL70 and you'll want to create a new post. So mouse over, go to post. For the title, title this research report on whatever the title of your research report is. Click underneath that and you'll want to um, type 
just basically one sentence. Um, view the research report on X by, uh, we'll again say, um, Teamy Mick team face, little my, and Harry Selden here. So you want to just write one sentence. View the research report on X by all the team members' names alphabetically organized by last name, and then the word here. And then highlight here, click on the link icon, paste that URL to your project website, click the submit button at the end of that. You can see here is now underlined and you can click it and you can see the URL just to make sure it's right. And then on the left hand side, click on post. And under student projects, let me add a new category for you all. Uh, this will be um, research report, parent category student projects. All right, put a check next to research report. It'll already be there. You don't have to add a new category. Check research report. After you've done that, click on publish. Click on publish again. All right, that's going to put that on our Open Lab site. Now, what do you do? You double check to make sure it works. Click on the title to go back to our Open Lab site. Click on the little arrow next to student projects. Oh, I don't have a menu option here yet uh, for that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add that. You don't have to do these steps I'm, I'm doing right now. This is just so we can find the research reports. Add to menu. There, save menu. All right. So to double check that your work is there and accurate, hit the down arrow, click research report. You're gonna see your research report right at the top because you just turned it in. Make sure it looks right and then click that link and make sure that it takes you to your team's project site again. Make sure all your pages look right in the menu, problems, solutions, recommendations about the team. And then on your landing page, make sure that you see the video for your team's presentation. The abstract should be here and then the link to the research report and double check again. Click it and make sure that it does open up to the viewable version of your team's uh, research report. Again, all this comes down to making sure things work because you can't take things for granted when you're in the workplace. You, you submit something uh, that a manager or your team is relying on and you did it half-assed and didn't double check it, you're gonna screw up somebody else who has to rely on your work to get their work done. Don't do that. Make sure your work is accurate and correct before you send it on. And then once you do send it, double check it again just to make sure, but in case you miss something, uh, because you can go back and edit and make sure things are right. All right, so that's um, everything with the project. You know, we talked about this checklist. Again, one person in your team creates that post on our Open Lab course site that links over to your Open Lab project site for your entire team. That site that you create for your team needs to have pages for problem, solutions, recommendations about your team, and then the landing page, you have to edit that post so that it includes your embedded video on YouTube for your team presentation, the abstract for your report, and then a link that'll take me over to your Google Doc of the shared version of your uh, research report. Then, after you've done all that, you know, again, just one person needs to do that, but all the team members should double check and make sure that thing is there because everybody's grade depends on it. 
But then individually, each team member needs to fit, send me a 500 word memo that describes the work that you contributed to your team project and your observations of your other teammates' contributions. You list their names and tell me what they did, what you saw them do. Uh, that will let me know how the team worked together. What did everybody contribute? Did everybody pull the same weight? Because that's important for me to know whenever I'm assigning grades on the project. Um, and that's something you just email me directly. Write it someplace safe so you have a copy, but just copy and paste that memo into your email address to jls at citytech.cuny.edu. Again, there's my email address. Um, just copy and paste it directly into the email. So I don't have to download anything. I don't got to click any links. I want to be able to read it and see it like that. Because uh, so I have to go through a lot of these. So save me some trouble by following my directions. Okay. <laughs> um, if anybody's got questions about any of this, email me, jls at citytech.cuny.edu. I'll have my office hours Wednesday 3 to 5 on Google Hangouts, or you, we can make an appointment at a different time. Um, and so this should set up everything that you need to do to, to wind up the semester. If you need to turn in anything late, turn it in, email me, and let me know that it's been turned in. Okay, so I know to go back and check it off for you. Um, again, I want to remind you, double check your grades on our Open Lab site. Um, that link is over here on the left. Um, under course gradebook, check your grade. You'll be able to see your grade for the major projects and all my feedback. If you're unhappy with the grade that I've given you, you can revise your work and resubmit it. Just post it again on Open Lab and send me a link saying, Professor Ellis, I reposted my work after I edited. Can you, can you reevaluate it for me? But make sure if you do that, you leave your original version there because I have to compare them. So you just post it again following the original directions for posting the work and that way I can compare your before with your after. Uh, I think that's everything. Um, so you know, make sure that you're doing everything to stay healthy, mask up, use social distancing, get plenty of rest, eat well, um, look after those around you. Let's get through this semester. Let's see this thing done right. You get a good grade, everything is completed. Um, remember, I'm a resource you can reach out to if there's something that comes up you need to talk to me about. jls at citytech.cuny.edu. Um, so good luck, and I will be talking with you all again real soon. Take care.